Hey guys, today is Friday. Let's sing a song about fish. Let's get five little fish. The one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let him go again. Why did you let him go? Because he bit my finger so. Which finger did he bite? His little finger on my right. Oh, bit it. That naughty fish. Let's sing it again. This time, I want to hear you crying in it because your finger got bit by fish. Ooh. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let him go again. Why did you let him go? Cause he bit my finger so. Which finger did he bite? This little finger on my right. Ow. Have you been bit by a fish before? Yeah, it does hurt. Be careful when you're fishing. I've got a book about fish. It's about taking care of fish. Should we read it? It's called The Hidden Forest by Jeannie Baker. The Hidden Forest. Wow. I didn't know there was a forest underwater. Look at it. Dark and blue. Wow. Like big trees underwater. The Hidden Forest. And there's a diver underneath, swimming with his, with the snorkels on. Wow, that is a beautiful, look at that, amazing colours. I can see small creatures. There's one hiding there. There's a little seahorse. And there's a starfish. These creatures are so beautiful. Sometimes you might find creatures or maybe insects in your backyard. They are so special, you know. Make sure you take care of those things because God's made them special for us to have a look at. The hidden forest. Wow. There's purple and pink underwater. And starfish. What beautiful. It's the hidden forest. Down in the dark, tangled world of the weed, there are big and small fish. Ben knows they are there. Oh, this must be Ben. But time after time, only tiddlers come up in his fish trap. What are tiddlers? Tiddlers are like little small fish. Ben empties them out in disgust to let them die. Oh, he lets them die. There they are in his boat. He doesn't care about them. Hmm. He wants something much bigger. This time when he tries to raise up the trap, it will not move. Ben yanks with all of his might. Give it a hard yank. <gasps> Suddenly he flips the tinny under him and he tumbles into the sea. Ben opens his eyes to a blurry underworld, water world. He feels the slimy kelp slide over him. Ooh. He senses a dark mo movement. What was that? <gasps> wow. Slimy kelp and dark and quiet underwater. I wonder what's watching him underwater. Ben panics. <gasps> He's afraid that some unknown creature will grab his leg as he scrambles back into the team. Did he see something or was it? His imagination. The kelp clings to his oars and won't let him go. <laughs> it's stuck on his oars. Oars are the paddles of his of his little dinghy. <gasps> Can you see that something? It looks like it's got tentacles. And there's two eyes there. I think it's a big octopus. But it's very vague. You can't see it very well. I think that the book is showing us that that's his imagination. He's imagining something like that coming for him. Is something like that coming for him? No. But eventually, Ben rose free of the kelp and calms down. He must recover his trap, but he will need the help of a friend who can dive down and untangle it. He thinks of Sophie. Ah, oh, where's my friend Sophie? Hmm. 
There's Ben. That must be Sophie over there on her boat. Let's go and see. Sophie is a strong diver. She agrees to help if Ben will come to see the world under the waves with her. You, I'll help you, but you must come and dive with me. <gasps> ben gazes at the surface of the water, but it's like a mirror. He worries about what might be lurking below and cautiously lowers himself into the sea. Look, he's got a weight belt on, goggles and a mask. Let's see what he finds. Oh, there they are. To his surprise, Ben finds himself floating above a mystery, mysterious underwater forest that sways back and forth with the rolling of the waves. Wow. If you get to go underwater with the waves, it is a beautiful thing. It's quiet and you can see the kelp wave back and forth. Sometimes it's a little bit scary. Wow, look how deep it is. Oh, looks like she's got it. Gigantic golden trees of kelp reach towards the sun. Shafts of sunlight shimmer in the branches. Wow, look at it. Ben anxiously waits while Sophie untangles the trap. At last, it's free. Wow, she is a good diver. Look how deep she went. Wow. That is very deep, isn't it? Sophie holds out her hand to Ben and takes him to explore the different kelps growing near the rocky shore. Ben holds onto a piece of big kelp and rides with it as it sways and stretches with the tide. When the kelp touches him, it feels like velvet swirling up against his skin. Wow, that's a very smooth feeling. It's like something very smooth touching your skin. Wow, that's pretty beautiful, isn't it? You can just close your eyes and imagine that. Touching, you're in the ocean, holding onto the kelp, and the waves are rolling back and forth slowly. And you can feel something smooth on your hand. It's the kelp that you're holding onto. Wow. He parts some of the kelp to reveal a rock, alive with all kinds of strange, beautiful textures. Look there, beautiful purple, little crab. Wow, I didn't know the underwater was so beautiful. Look at the gorgeous little fish too. Manta ray, it's cool. Sophie shows Ben how he can hold his breath and dive into the forest to look for sea dragons. Sea dragons? Do you want to hold our breath and imagine? Let's do it. Deeper. 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 Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful kelp rolling back and forth. Very quiet. Sensing a presence behind him, Ben turns. I wonder what's behind me. Oh my goodness, can you see that? God has made some incredible creatures. Wow. Look at the size of this. What is it? Is it a shark? A fish? No, it's a whale. A whale watching him closely glides gently by. Ben is overwhelmed with wonder. Wow, what's wonder? One is when you see something amazing and you just stop and stare at it like this. Or you might see a waterfall. Water trickling off a mountain, falling slowly to the floor, and crashing on the rocks. You might just sit there and go, wow, that's what wonder is. They catch glimpses of its dark, gleaming shape, rolling and sliding against the kelp as it passes on around the bay. Wow, there they are there, in the kelp. <clears throat> Together they pull up the fish trap, Ben gazes in fascination at his trap. He's going to look at what he caught. I wonder if he's going to put it back in his boat and let them die. Do you think he should leave those fishes to die in his 
Dingy? No, of course not. God has made each and every creature very beautiful. And we as people are made in his image. We're the most important. It also means we've got to take care of the other animals. Because they're beautiful too. Good job, Ben. Ben, by now, Ben sees something differently now. He sees how wonderful these creatures are. Here in their mysterious hidden world, he feels this is where they belong. He caught an octopus, a little red fish, another one looks like a little trigger fish, some beautiful other little fish, and a starfish too. Good job, Ben. He released them back into the ocean. Wow, that was a hidden forest. Wow, I can't wait to go out to the water again and put my goggles on and dive underneath the water, having a look at the reef. We live, I live in Cairns and so do you. And guess what? Out in the ocean, we have reef. And reef is just like this, but it's rock. And it's like a rock that grows. It's very, very fascinating. And they all have beautiful colours and they're alive. Crazy, isn't it? I wonder if you will be able to go diving when you can learn how to swim and hold your breath. Maybe your daddy has a boat and he can take you out. We're going to do some playing now. Would you like to come in my underwater forest? I've made one. Do you want to come and have a look? I'm going to go for a dive under the water. I can't go there right now, but I'm going to take you to my little one. It's pretend. Your imagination with me? Come on. Let's go for a swim there. Hey kitty kids, we've just read The Hidden Forest by Jeannie Baker and now we're going to come and play in my hidden forest. This is the underwater world we've made. You can make your own one at home if you want. Miss Yui, you want to come play with me? Sure. Come on. Hello, what's your name? My name's Darcy. Darcy? We have a boy named Darcy. I didn't know. There's another Darcy. Darcy the fish. Come on, let's go for a swim in the ocean. Wow, under the water, it was dark and quiet. Wow, I can see a shark. Can you see that shark? Yeah, I see a shark. Are you a nice shark? Hello. He's very quiet. He might be shy. Do you, would you like to play with us? Come on, let's play. Let's go for a swim. Wow, we can glide in the water, can't we? Wow. Hey, what's all this rubbish? Have what's we been that? making this rubbish? Mm -mm. Who was it? The people? The people above. Oh no. Oh no. Should we clean up this mystery? Sure, sure. Come on, Darcy. Let's get this rubbish. Picking up the rubbish. Oh dear. Don't eat the rubbish. More rubbish. Oh dear. Oh, no. Look what I found. Ah, oh, too much rubbish. Let's put it in the pile. Dear me. Mm. Oh. McDonald's straw. What's that doing in there? Oh no. Ah, oh, that's nice and clean. That's a nice clean underwater well. Should we leave rubbish in our underneath the sea? No. No, we shouldn't, should we? Now it's nice and clean so our animals and our whales and our sharks can all live happily together, can't we? Yes. Come on, yes. let's go for another swim. Oh, it's nice and clean now. Wow, look at this beautiful well we've got in here. There's beautiful shells. Yes. Wow. Different shells. What? Wow, that's a spiky one, this Yui. Ooh! This one here has got a, a funny pattern on it. It makes, it's got a, almost makes it sound like an instrument. Yeah. Hmm. All right, boys and girls. We might sing a song together. Would you like to sing a song? Yeah. Let's sing it together. Ready? We've just been underwater and we'll sing a song. Hmm. Humpty Dumpty is a good song. Let's sing it. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Oh, we're 
doing so many things with this Play-Doh. It's so squishy. It's good to play with. I could roll it up into a ball. There's a ball. Do lots of different things with this Play-Doh. I could make a pizza. Get my rolling pin. Pizza, put some tomatoes on my pizza. Do lots of different things with this play -Doh. Let's go see what Mr. Crowd is doing. Dan, 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 this is a really big shark. It's actually a little bit of a scary story. I'm gonna tell you a story about me. And one time, one time, I was fishing. I wasn't fishing with a fishing rod. I was fishing with a spear gun. A spear gun is a long gun, and on it sits a spear. And when you pull the trigger, the spear goes as fast as it can towards a fish, and the fish gets hit and then you get to keep it for dinner. Hmm. Let's have a look at this story. This story is also about a time where Mr. Crowder almost got eaten. Let's see what happens. Like someone saved him. Wonder if you can guess what's who saved him. So one day, out on the ocean, Mr. Crowder was on a boat going out to sea. Here we go, here's a boat. There it is, my big boat. It's got a big engine. It's going super fast in the water. We were going out to see how many fish we could catch. I'm on the boat. Another friend's on the boat. Oh, this guy's steering the boat. And there's a few people on the boat because it was someone's special day. And then we got to a special spot where the reef is. And the reef has got special beautiful plants that grow under. They grow under water. So here's the rocks of the bottom. And then there's big different reefs like this one. This one. And then there's some that are squishy. Some that are wobbly. Some that are just huge rocks. And then fish hide underneath. Mm. Let me just draw a few more different reefs. Just for you. So you can get the picture. And they're actually all different colours. So some are some are red. Some are some are orange, some are purple, some are green. Lots of them are green actually. First I was in the boat and I was travelling out and I thought this, what a beautiful day to be going out to the ocean to go and look for some fish. And then I thought, what if a shark comes? And sharks do often come, but do you have to be afraid of them? No, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid if you know God's protecting you. So I thought, no, we don't have to be afraid. And then I thought, what happens if a shark does come and it tries to get me? And I thought, oh, this could be scary. If a shark tries to come and get me, what would I do? What would happen? <gasps> I thought, that's what I'm going to do. So I, at, right then I thought, God, if a shark does come and get me, can you send one of your angels to come and punch it out of the way? Just move it, just enough. I still want to see it, but I don't want it to touch me or hurt me. And I thought, geez, that's a funny prayer. I don't often pray that he would send angels to come help me. Anyway, off I went. I kept on going out towards the reef, and then we all went spear fishing. So here's Mr. Crowder. When you go underwater, you have goggles. There's my goggles. You've got a snorkel, which goes up the side of your ear and lets you breathe. 
You've got a Mr. Crowder also wears a special belt and it's got heavy things on it, pieces of lead which keep me, let me dive deeper. And then I've also got nice long flippers. The flippers help me swim like these, like the creatures in the ocean. They help me swim right down deep. And I've got, I'm holding this big long gun, it's, it's quite long. And I'm looking for my fish. Ah, there it is down there. Can you see it? It's got spots on it. It actually has kind of red spots. Its name is a coral trout. You often see them in shops and they're in their little aquariums swimming around. They're a beautiful tasting fish. And I was swimming. Everyone hold your breath. <gasps> deeper and deeper. And there I saw, <gasps> yes, it was a nice big coral trout. So I said, this is gonna be the one. So I got my gun, I raised it up, I aimed at it, and I was trying to look right down the line. And then when I thought, can't get away, I pulled the trigger. Oh, yes, I got him. The fish was trying to escape, but I got him. And he was like this. Goes down like this. And it's actually got a little line attached to it. So he can't escape. And he was doing little circles. Ran around and around in circles. And then Mr. Crowder was going, oh, I, I can't hold my breath forever. So now it's time to swim up. And I was flipping my um, flippers. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came this whopping big something. And I didn't even know what it was. And it grabbed my foot, and it twirled me upside down. And I went, Whoa, what happened then? And my flipper got sucked off. Where is it? I didn't have my flipper anymore. It was sinking to the bottom. And I also wear a special thing under my flipper, called a flipper sock. Flipper socks under water? It's my little sock. Oh, that doesn't look like a sock. Come on, Mr. Crowder. There, it's a little black flipper sock. Something flipped me upside down, and then my flipper and my flipper sock got taken off. What was it? I didn't even know. I spun around so quickly, and as I looked, I just saw this big, big, it was like a big barrel of a grey thing. Mm -hmm. Swimming off. The shark literally just grabbed my flipper. This is what it looked like. Let's see if I can draw it. I had a big body. There's a flipper here. Whoa. There's a flipper here. Here we go. He had these big things like this. He was angry. And so when I shot the fish, I was swimming up. It grabbed my flipper and my sock and twirl me upside down. Oh, my air escaped. <gasps> and I came to the top and as I looked, there he was. Mm -hmm. Off he went. And I went, oh my goodness. What just happened? I thought, usually what happens is, if you do shoot a fish, the shark will come and eats the fish because it likes fish. Not me. It's not supposed to eat me. So I got to the top. <gasps> And I spat out my snorkel and I went, oh my goodness, I need to get to the boat quick. And I went, where is it? And I went, there they are, they're over there. So I yelled at them, hey, hey. And they said, hey, what's wrong? And I said, there's a shark, come and get me. And they said, it's just a baby, swim to the boat. And I went, it's not a baby, it's a big one. And I went down one hour and I looked around again. Oh no. And there was my flipper sock and my flipper sinking to the bottom. And I looked down and I thought, I'm going to need one of my flippers. Forget my flipper sock. I'm not going to go get that. So I grabbed it, put it on my foot. I still had my fish. Woohoo! And then I had the fish and I thought, okay, these guys are not coming to get me. I'm going to have to swim to the boat. So I was, as fast as I could. Back to the boat, and I threw my fish on the board, and then I jumped up, <sighs> and they said, "Geez, what's wrong with you?" And I said, "I told you there was a shark." 
And they said, we know there's always sharks in the ocean. And I said, no, there's a big one. And it took my flipper, you gooses. And they said, oh, it took a flipper. And then they looked at my foot and they said, where's the flipper sock? And I said, it took that too. And they said, go and get it. I'm not going in the water. It's down in the water. I'm not going to go get it. And I became a little bit afraid. I was scared. And I thought, oh, I'm safe. And then as I was going back on the boat, I thought, I told my friends and my brother, and I said, I told them what happened. And then I said, actually, do you know what I asked God for? And they said, what? What did you ask God for? To be attacked by a shark? And I said, no, I didn't say that. I said, if a shark does come, can you send someone to come and punch it out of the way so it doesn't get me? Isn't that crazy? Do you know how close your sock is to your foot? Let me show you. Oh, I can't. It's too high up. But your sock is very close to your shoe. And it's very close to your skin. Do you know if that shark, here's my foot. <coughs> Let's move over here. Here's my big foot. Oh, that's a big foot. Here's my toes. Oh, yeah. Here's my toes. And here's my flipper. This is where the flipper goes on here. Whoops, that's not what it looks like, but anyway. And the flipper sock goes here. It's a little black thing. You know how close that is? Somehow the shark must have bitten right about. I'm thinking it must have bitten right about here. Because somehow it bit my flipper sock, but it didn't. Touch my foot. If it missed, and my legs were swimming fast, they were doing this. That shark hit right along there, and it grabbed that flipper and turned me upside down. If it had missed, what could have happened to my leg? I could have been a pirate. I would have had no leg. You might have a teacher with a wooden leg. That would be crazy, wouldn't it? Or if it, if it went even faster and missed, maybe I would have had no knee. Thank you, Jesus. Who saved me? Jesus. He sent an angel straight down to help me. Was Mr. Crowder a little bit afraid of sharks after that? I was. I was. After that, when I hopped in the water, I was never, I wasn't the same. I was a bit afraid of sharks. But that's another story. I'm going to let you know that that's another story. I might tell you that later. Mm. But does God protect you when you need it? Absolutely. Does he give you, does he allow you to be, feel afraid sometimes? He does. I was afraid. But did I need to be afraid? No. And if I went back into the water, did I need to be afraid? No, because who protected me? God protected me. Wow. We don't have to be afraid of anything. If we know God's in control, everything's going to be all right. There's a, there's a little verse in the Bible that says this, I, that's God, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but I gave you one of power, love, and of a sound mind. Which means I'm going to be strong when I'm afraid. When I think I'm afraid, instead of being afraid, I'm going to be strong and I'm going to have clear thoughts. And I'm going to be able to love people, even when other people are afraid. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed that story. It's a story about how much God protects us and loves us. Bye, guys.